Okay, so this is all kind of real timey. I just have like an hour before I have to go take a nap so I can go to work all night. And uh, the creek's been opening up a bit. It's been sunny and warm. And this is one of my favorite pools out in the middle of nowhere in wilderness. Uh, so I'm just fishing it real quick just to try a few casts, hoping that there's at least one fish in here. So check this out. I hope you like it. Uh, it's real fast and dirty, but I do this a lot. Hurry up and go fish, see what happens, and then go do something I'm supposed to do. This is the water. You can see I've got you can see I've got this icy bank. And it gets deep. You can see there's a back eddy there and there's a little tributary dumping in. Money money. Um, not much flow in there. And I scouted in that back eddy. I didn't see any fish at all. And generally when I've fished it in the past, I never catch anything over there. So most of the fish are up in the faster water and the drop off is not very visible because water gets a little bit green from erosion because we like to just dump stuff in the creek around here and not stabilize the banks. So the water gets greenish down here, um, out in the middle of nowhere. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm crouching down here on my knees. First cast, so they're just super short. Keeping the rod tip up, watching that cider. The trick here though is it goes from like ankle shin deep water to armpit deep water in just a couple of feet. So that's what I'm trying to feel out here is when to let those nymphs just drop and plummet down. Most of the fish I've ever caught through here and most of the fish you usually catch at the head of most pools, look at that are um, at the very head of a pool where it gets deep. So again, I'm a little back a ways, but this is watery slushy ice. So this is watery slushy ice, so the fish is okay. It's nice and wet. Flipped off the hook, uh, Euro Nymph. That was on kind of a Lance Egan Frenchy variation. Instead of orange, I used yellow. So brownie number one, and that was my third drift and he was right down in there right where the tip of my rod is so i think there's more this is awesome drifting down right there looks like that's the drop oh yep it is and that's where the fish are they're just i don't know if they're stacked up in there because i can't see deep enough but that's my second fish in two casts i'm gonna crawl down here i'm trying to keep a super low profile because I'm guessing they're stacked in there. There aren't that many pools open at this time of the year and very fishable. Wow, that's a beautiful fish, at least for this creek. Small stream. <laughs> Look at that. Oh man, beautiful brown. Yeah, oh, that's a beautiful brown. And I've got this little, it's like a paradigon Ryacophila variation that I just started tying and I've been doing really well with it. Beautiful brown. As he finds the depths from whence he came. Whoa! They're right there. I'm on the edge of them. And I bust through the ice. There we go, buddy. Beautiful brownie. And he's going back downstream out of the pool. There's a nice run down there. He'll probably hang out near that tree i'm guessing and then come back up whenever he feels like it probably in the night all right so a couple of fish and a couple of casts not so bad um the lesson kind of is though that again you want to be at the very head of a pool eventually when you do get there you want to find that drop right where that riffle cuts down and the current looks really fast and it, you would think it's shallow and too fast to really be a pool, but underneath that fast current is a drop in a very slow water. The boulders are a little bigger there, so that's generally where they'll get deposited um, is as soon as that current tapers off. So it's nice, slow, deep water, and you gotta chop over the head of the fish. It's really good water to fish, so go to your own streams that you found in wild, remote, wilderness places and see if you can do the same. Boom, fast, choppy, deep water. Beautiful. 
third drift. This is a little farther back. It's already deep when my flies are touching the water. So I'm kind of going for fish that are hanging the tail out. And then right here, it starts to get shallow. So this is a little different in that it's deep where I start my drift. That's over on the far edge of the current, right where that back eddy comes around. And then it'll get shallower and where it starts to ramp up and get shallower is another spot. Ah, there we go, where fish like to hang out, right there at the tail out. Oop, lost him though. That was me getting my line loose when I went to go try to retrieve my line in. Can't win them all, but there was a fish right at the tail out where the ramp is, I call it a ramp, the tail out of the pool. And again, right out in what's the fall leg of the water, the deepest spot where the channel makes the deepest carving point in the cross section of a stream. Getting deep, coming up to the tail, keeping direct contact with the Euro nymphs. My leaders are generally super bright, a lot brighter than a lot of other people's, but I also fish a lot of, there we go, headwater mountain streams that are generally fast and choppy. So generally when I'm fishing, I'm not as worried about spooking fish with my line because the water is choppy and fast. And this little guy was on that Ryokofila, which they're eating either because A, the bead is bigger, so it's the deepest fly, but I don't think that's the case. I think they just like it. I mean, it is the heavier of the two flies, but, um, or it's just B, they like that bright green. Um, relatively, here, let's try this. Relatively accurate representation of a caddis larva. Beautiful wild brownie. Boom. And that's three wild browns. Uh, the, the They don't get stocked in this stream and they haven't been stocked since the mid 70s. Um, but three different age classes. That's what I wanted to point out. Sorry, I was looking at my line and thinking about where I was gonna cast next. Um, three different age classes of browns, all wild, which means they're reproducing, which is awesome. Thank goodness something is still taking care of itself. It's out in the tail of the pool. That little guy was just, he's out there. I've been kind of on that seam where the uh, back eddy pushes into the current. The main current in the middle. That was a fish and I missed it. Cause I was busy talking. Well, there's a lot of cross currents in there and I'm bumping my leader up to try to keep that line tight so that it cuts through a little bit. Uh, I might be touch touching detritus in there. There's also just piles of leaves in this stream right now. A lot of cottonwoods. Man, I'm excited. I've only been fishing for like five minutes and I have three fish to hand. That's not bad. And it's gonna start slowing down here, I think. The fish are now gonna be ooh, familiar with my flies. <laughs> that was on that Egan variation, um, the yellow Frenchie. Come on, bud. There we go. I'll just push him back in. Watch. Wild brownie. There we go. Boom. And that was the same year class as before. Right on that seam where the back eddy is touching the main current. Well, the edge of the main current. And again, I'm kind of, I'm lifting up just a little bit because I know that there are currents underneath the surface that I can't see. So just to keep my flies tight so that I can feel when a fish takes, I just keep lifting up. And then when it goes down, I only go down as fast as the flies go down. There's another fish. It's like every three drifts, I'm getting a fish. And I'm trying to retrieve. Let's see, it's just not easy to do this. What if I do this? 
that semi-automatic, oh boy, sorry about that, semi-automatic reel. All right, I think I have enough line I can pull them in now. That was on the cat, no, that was on that Frenchie. Huh. Yellow Frenchie. I started fishing that pattern last summer and I started doing really well with it. And it continues to produce. It's about a size 16 on a jig hook. Let's see you, bud. Oh yeah, all right, ooh. All right, I only have about 10 feet of line out total now. I'm just gonna stay in really close. And get my forceps, my Dr. Slick forceps. These are the best forceps ever, I think. The only modification I would do is put the textured part closer to the tip, because I use that base for flattening barbs. Um, if I have barbs, right? Most of my stuff's barbless, but clean out the eye, hook eye there. You have scissors at the base, and I can cut my line there. Can use that little flathead deal for. Um, screwdrivers if you need to tighten or loosen so the other modification i'd make would be to put a phillips there and then a star head off to there and then i can do anything um but just a super useful tool i don't need anything else really just this i have a box of flies tip it and uh my fly rod and reel and i'm doing all right getting good grades if i was to be graded by the fish they're liking this i'm liking this anyways i'm gonna keep fishing and I'm just gonna keep fishing and I'm not gonna film anymore. But this is a great way, if you can get out, just find any excuse to go out and do this. Not here, cause I'll be here and I'll throw rocks at you. Um, but anywhere else that you wanna go fish, get there. And a couple different sizes of flies. I'm using a little caddis and mayfly stuff. Um, when you find these waters opening up though at the warmer temperatures, you should expect to find more fish. Um, eagerly fishing, which is one reason why I love pre-runoff fishing in general. Like March and April are my two favorite months, I guess if anyone's going to ask me. Maybe late February, and it is late. It's the last day of January, actually, and it's 50 degrees. The water is just opening up on the creek, which it really shouldn't be, but it is. And I'm catching fish. Lots of fish. Wild fish untouched by man until I got to him. This is good. This is good. Anyways, I hope there's a little bit enlightening. I hope you're enjoying it if you're stuck in a cubicle somewhere, surrounded by concrete, pavement, honking horns, super aggressive drivers, wherever you might be stuck. I hope this helps relieve some of that stress because it's really helping me. And there's another one. Come here. Oh God. Circulating. A little bit bigger than those last two. Wild brownie on the little size 16 yellow Frenchie. Come on, bud. Sit still. Such a good day. 